Uh, and if you think what, of, what what do you think about Rubio, who I've called the ice cream man? What do you think of him? Well, have you ever seen him throw uh, uh, branches into one of those shredders? That's yes. what Hillary would do to him. <laughs> oh, gee, a tree a tree chipper. He, he oh. eats meat. But uh, I, do you I know think... that the establishment is backing Rubio, and he has the backing of two of the most powerful Republican billionaires? He has uh, Sheldon Adelson uh, in, in, in Las Vegas with gambling interests, obviously, who wants Rubio. I mean, I, I think I could pretty much figure out why. Well, speaking of Vegas, if they put him up, I'm, I'm betting on Clinton. But anyway, uh, <laughs> the other thing is he's pointed out how stupid uh, that the current administration is doing. That deal with uh, Iran is pathetic, and then the Kerry says that they're going to use some of the money for terrorism. Oh, boy, that, that was a partial differential equation to figure out, wasn't it? That's like the CDC telling us that the Zika virus will not, they don't think it will become pandemic. They suspect it won't become pandemic. They suspect, that's like, uh, it's the opposite of what WHO is telling us. They're always hedging their bet. Meanwhile, the same Iran is now denying the Holocaust existed. Iran's supreme leader, one of the most evil people on the planet, says it's not clear if the Holocaust is a reality or not. In that, he agrees with the American Nazi Party. The same time, the Grand Iman of the Grand Mosque in Mecca says, ISIS has the same beliefs that we do. And so we're now cozying up to these people, whether they're Sunni or Shia. They'll all cut our throats. Exactly. They'll all cut our throats. They hate Christians and Jews. When are the people going to awaken to what we are facing? And if there's only one man who can stand them down. And that is Donald Trump. That's why he is resonating. That's but, exactly you know, I, right. The American people are not stupid. They clearly see the threat to their survival. They have become Israelis. All Americans have become Israelis and understand that this fanatical movement is an existential threat to the survival of America and, their, and themselves. And they know there's only one man who sees it, is willing to say it, and seize the moment and take them on. Yes. Philip, thanks for being a great listener on KLIF on the Savage Nation. Let's take the next caller on the uh, program. I have many, many good callers. Uh, M-A-L, Michael, you're up on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind, Michael, from M-A-L? Yeah, thank oh. you very much. Uh, it seems to me we've got Congress full of people that consider the Constitution a piece of paper and don't follow their oath of office. So while it is very admirable to be a strict constitutionalist or a purist, those people will not get anything done. And that's why Trump resonates with me. Uh, he is a man of action, has extremely strong will to get things accomplished. And if he is, I think you have to be a narcissist to run for president to begin with and an egoist. But totally. if he is, what's wrong with that? If he wants to be well, you know what I love is all all of the failures in Hollywood are calling him a narcissist, like they're not. They don't like him because he's bigger than they are. He's trumped all of the phonies in Hollywood, so they don't like him. That's a given. And they're all deviants on the left. That's a given. So they don't like him because he's shaking up the established order, and they're terrified of what might happen. Can you imagine if suddenly they can't promote guns in every movie and then say they're anti-gun? Can you imagine if they are no longer able to promote? A promiscuity, what might happen to Hollywood? What happens to Harvey Weinstein if, if promiscuity is, if they're told to curtail a little of the promiscuity in the movies? If the pornography industry is reined in? If the drug industry is reined in? Can you imagine what might happen? Well, right. Well, their world would collapse. I think it's going to collapse anyway with Trump. Uh, he just has. No, that's what, but that's what they're afraid of. Trump has the, the, the charisma, the persona the cojones, whatever you want to say, to get things done and to override all of these other forces. And that's why they're all uh, um, gathering against him. That's why they're gathering against him. But, uh, you know, my, my, my discussion today is about blood in the water, purists versus pragmatists. Do you care to comment? Well, you actually commented. You said purists have every right to be purists and to quote the Constitution because it's been shredded by uh, so many in Congress, but they can't be elected. Isn't that what you just said? Well, it's admirable to have those strong convictions. However, we want somebody that can get something done. And at this point, when you have so many, the vast majority of Congress, 
that does not follow or even admire the Constitution. They're only after their own gains or the gains of their donors or contributors. You need somebody who can form a consensus. Donald Trump has proven that he can do that. I mean, there's numerous examples of uh, his success in building, his success with Woman Rink. And, uh, can I ask you, has Ted Cruz ever worked in, in the real world? That's exactly, you know, I tell that to a lot of people. I've seen, uh, has he ever had any executive experience of any kind? Has he worked okay. in the real world? Has he, has he provided a, a service, or has he done anything that anyone has bought? He, as so far as I know, he went from Canada to Harvard to Texas, but I don't know that he's built anything or created anything. Do you? Well, he's argued cases at the Supreme Court. He's extremely... I understand. So he's a lawyer. Well, that's great. Obama's a lawyer. Look how that's worked out for us. Congress is full of lawyers. We, I want a businessman in there. And I'll tell you what, if Trump can only do... If, I know he'll build a wall. He, he has strength of will to get that done. I know that he will renegotiate trade deals that we have because he loves that kind of stuff. Uh, I know that he will go through the budget and the EPA and regulations with a fine-tooth comb. He loves doing that kind of stuff. And he wants to be... And I think at that note, we will say thank you for, for that call because I'm running up against the hard break. Here's a headline now on the um, Fox uh, website. Murdered and no one is talking. And it's a black man who was murdered. Terrible thing. Notice there's no report on the white man who was murdered by Oregon State Police in the standoff. That's been dropped like a hot potato by the very honest Leprechaun Network. Back in a minute. All right, Michael Savage. Here's a little uh, more news for you about the uh, media, government media complex. Google... And Fox are running the debate tonight, as you well know. That should tell you all you need to know. <clears throat> okay. So following in the tradition of the Democrats inviting unknown schmucks like bloggers to ask questions, people never heard of these morons. A blogger with 12, 12, 1,200 followers are being invited. So who did they invite? Who, who was invited by Roger Ailes to ask questions at the Republican debate? The Islamic advocate and fashion blogger invited by Google and Fox is also a supporter of the communist candidate Bernie Sanders. The Muslim Nabila Noor tweeted a picture of herself wearing a red Sanders sweatshirt on January 16th. If that's not bad enough, Noor describes herself as an advocate for Islam, earlier posted a video portraying Adolf Hitler in agreement with Donald Trump. Shame on you, Roger. I think your dirty laundry is coming out in the wash, and people don't like what they see. And they also don't like the fact that the river dancers' skirts don't seem to be too clean either. That's what's really coming out here, and it's not good for your uh, business enterprise, as your boss is probably going to spank you over what you've done. This is crazy. San Francisco Park reopens with outdoor urinal. San Francisco's iconic Dolores Park is now home to the city's first open-air urinal. That's to get some of the bums off the streets. I have a few comments I can make on this, but it's a family show. That's unbelievable. So the homeless now have uh, forced a $20 million renovation, 27 toilets, and now the homeless, of course, won't use the toilets, as you well know. A Zeta virus outbreak in the U.S. is likely, says the CDC. Really? Yesterday they said it's not likely. Yesterday it wasn't likely, it isn't likely, it was likely, it is likely. Maybe tomorrow, not tomorrow, use mosquito repellent. Don't go to a Zika-infected area. Don't, don't uh, go to a mosquito dating site. Whatever you do, don't kiss a mosquito. That's the best they can do. Instead of imposing common sense methods of stopping the virus from spreading into the U.S., which is quarantine of those coming from the areas, travel controls, that's what you do in a sane nation. Those are the first rules of epidemiology. They're not extremist points whatsoever. They've just been made extremist by the uh, politicians who run the Centers for Disease Control. But quarantine, travel bans, now nah, we can't have those things. They just make sense. And it's bad for the political machine. Because if you want to have a few million new voters and you put in a travel ban, the people are liable to say, wait a minute, 
we had millions of them coming in from that country who were not citizens. We can't have that. See how that works? You understand that? Dave on KSFO, I don't know which side you're on, but you're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Hi. The reason middle America loves, loves uh, Donald Trump is because they're dying for optimism. That's the whole statement, then? I'm through? And, 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 and to be in a practical, a practical view like you have, we'll get him in the White House. That's all right. So he's a, in other words, he's a he's an optimist, and they like optimism. All this pest. All right, that's one way to look at it. I think it's because he's a bil a builder who's rich, and people actually like admire the rich rich people who do something. Remember, he's not a speculator like uh, George Soros, who built nothing in his entire life. Think about that. George Soros is a billionaire too, but he made his money by betting against currencies. He's the lowest of the low of the rich. The rich who make their money in speculation are the leeches of the rich world. The rich who make their money by building and creating things are another breed altogether. So don't confuse all billionaires, you know. Some actually produce things that people buy or live in or drive on or drive in or communicate with or even go to their uh, entertainments, for God's sakes. There are billionaires who produce things that people want, and they're not all bad. Need to say it again and again and again. And then there were evil billionaires like George Soros, in my opinion, who was a leech on the world stage. And I hope China cracks down on that leech. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Yesterday, I said that Trump may be negotiating directly with Murdoch and that he may attend the debate tonight after all. That hasn't been reported, nor do I know if that is true. But my instincts are rarely wrong. And when they are, I tell you they're wrong, or you'll tell me, believe me. I'm going to make a prediction on this show that if I were a betting man, I would bet that Trump will appear tonight on, at, on both stages. That he will appear at the debate at some point, and he will run the fundraiser for the uh, Warriors. Now, yesterday on this show, I more or less said the same thing. Now, what I should do is repeat what I said on January 27th, which was yesterday, of course, where I told you that Trump was probably negotiating directly with Rupert Moloch. I said that the news dancer is going to be told to curtsy and control herself and not go, go for the throat. And Trump probably got it in writing that if the news dancer goes for his jugular, a certain dollar amount will be paid to Trump, which is the only way to control the news dancer, because it'll come out of her kitty. And uh, that's it. Is that simple? What else can I say to you? I'm an outsider looking in. I don't know anyone. I have no sources. I've survived all these years in radio and as, as a writer simply by analyzing things as best I can using deductive logic. Actually, it's Aristotelian logic to be specific. I was trained in it. I know I sound like a truck driver, which I'm proud of, or old longshoreman from the 1950s, which I'm proud of. But the fact is, is I have I'm a, a mind that functions very much like an ancient Greek who studied on the, on the Aristotle. If you actually analyze what I say, you'll find out that it's quite precise. There's an elegance to it. I realize that it doesn't meet the protocols of the elders of the media, but there's a certain precision to what I say to you. The Democrats are laughing because they see the entire Republican Party split in two, with the purists attacking the pragmatists and the pragmatists mocking the purists. Both sides happen to be right. Of course, we would all like a purist candidate to win. However, most every election in the past has been lost on the Republican side by purist candidates who did not appeal to the masses. Or people just sit out the election if the candidates are not pure enough for them. Uh, this is understandable, given what Boehner and McConnell and now Ryan have done to the very voters who put them in power to advance the conservative agenda against the extremist President Obama as he advances toward pure government control over our lives. And then you have the pragmatists on the other side, and I consider myself a pragmatist after seeing what purists have gotten politically, which is near zero. You see, purists have rarely elected anyone, ever and they will not in 2016. This schism between purists versus pragmatists 
is equal to the schism even within religions. Whether it's in the Jewish religion where you have the ultra-Orthodox purists 